Welcome back. Follow the inventory. What I mean is that if you want to gauge the direction of a specific area's housing market, which direction they're headed, my advice for you guys is to look at the changes in the amount of houses for sale, especially compared to years past, um, going back to 2019 at least. So I actually um, found an excellent and fantastic article from Lance Lambert. He's one of the co-founders of resiclub.com. I'll provide a link in the video description below. They have um, a wide range of articles and data sources um, regarding the US housing market. Some of those articles are paid, some of them are free. And I believe their um, pro um, uh, membership is around $300 per year. But again, fantastic analytics regarding um, housing market trends we're seeing on a national level, but also at the countywide level as well. So let's take a look at this latest article from uh, Lance Lambert. And just looking at his uh, LinkedIn page here, uh, he's a co-founder and editor-in-chief at Resi Club over the past seven months. I actually emailed him back in October or November last year. He emailed me back uh, really quickly, and we actually got on a phone call, talked about um, his uh, venture here, and also talked about the housing market as well. So I really appreciated all the time he spent uh, to speak with me. Uh, prior to that, he was the, um, the real estate editor at Fortune and also a housing analyst at Realtor.com. Anyways, uh, really good um, insights regarding what's happening um, in our housing market. So this is a look at inventory numbers um, for 800 plus metros and 3,000 counties, as well as each of the states as well. Um, I want to share this because, um, you know, again, every housing market is different, right? There are some areas in which uh, the amount of houses for sale or inventory levels are down by about 70% compared to pre-pandemic levels back in 2019. Whereas other areas such as San Antonio, Texas and Austin, Texas are experiencing gains of inventory. So it says, generally speaking, housing markets where inventory or active listings has returned to pre-pandemic levels have experienced weaker home price growth or outright decreases over the past 20 months. Conversely, housing markets where inventory remains very low and also below um, pre-COVID levels um, generally speaking, experienced stronger home price growth over the past 20 months. I'll share some data regarding that because again, some areas which inventory is absolutely skyrocketing, home prices are down, whereas other areas where inventory is down greatly from March of 2019, um, home prices are still at very high levels. So for example, overall for the nation, according to Realtor.com, uh, I actually reported to you guys uh, a couple of days ago regarding this, maybe about a week ago, that inventory levels are up by 23.5% on a national level compared to March of 2023. On top of that, they're up a whopping 96% compared to March of 2022. Back then, that was more or less the all-time record lows for the amount of houses for sale nationwide. Also on a national level, active listings this March compared to March of 2019 are down by 37.1%. But again, some metros up big time, other metros down big time as well. So let's take a look at the changes of inventory levels over the past five years, going back to March of 2019. So compared to pre-COVID levels, as you can see here, all the areas shaded in red are areas in which inventory is down greatly from pre-COVID levels. In contrast, areas in dark green are up big time as well. So what really caught my attention is that overall, areas in the Northeast, as well as areas such as in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois and Michigan, for example, are down big time compared to um, 2019. In contrast, many areas in uh, Texas, especially um, Southwest uh, Texas, uh, in these counties here are up big time. Look at that, um, Reeves, Texas up by 300% um, from March, 2019, through March 2024. In contrast, many areas in um, Arizona, as well as uh, New Mexico, for example, are down big time as well. Uh, let's also look at um, California, since I um, live and work here as a real estate agent in Sacramento, because in Sacramento um, County, 
which is, let me just find it right here, Sacramento County right there, uh, down by 47% from five years ago. Much of these counties are down big time, uh, except for uh, San Francisco. Look at San Fran. San Fran is actually up by 54.3% whereas the surrounding counties are down by double digits. Also looking at uh, surrounding counties of Sacramento, El Dorado County down by 47%, and Placer is down by 40%. Now just going down um, the state, looking at Monterey down by 55.5%, absolutely crazy, uh, whereas um, San Diego is down by 59%. Makes sense that they, because they have you know 59%, um, fewer house for sale compared to March of 2019. It makes sense that home prices are up big time as well. We're seeing that same scenario in Orange County as well. Orange County down by nearly 70%. Absolutely crazy. Let's zoom out and look at Florida though, because uh, there's some pretty big uh, differences there. This is zoom in. So in Florida, for example, Miami-Dade, Florida is down by 43.1%, whereas other counties are up by more than 40%. For the nation as a whole, here's a chart that you guys may be um, uh, familiar with because I shared this on the channel uh, a couple of times. This is a look at inventory levels on a national level according to Realtor.com. So for the month of March this year, the most recent stats we have from them, of course, is at least a three-year high right now. Uh, but we're still below levels uh, compared to 2017 through 2019, when back then approximately 1.1 million houses were, were for sale. Now there's approximately 700,000. Also on a national level, um, we have approximately 24% more houses for sale compared to March uh, 2023. I mentioned that because every state is different. So for example, there was uh, Nevada. Nevada is down by 26.1% um, on a year-over-year -year basis, whereas Florida has experienced a giant increase of 57% compared to 12 months ago. Other big increases as well is Vermont up by 38%, Texas 31%, Nebraska up by 29%, Minnesota up by 30%, whereas um, Illinois is down by 5%, Idaho down by 1%, New York down by 4%, New Jersey more or less flat, and of course California is only uh, experiencing a gain of 10.9%. Going back to Resi Club's uh, report here, it says if this current trajectory holds, markets like Tampa and Orlando could join other housing markets such as Austin and San Antonio, where active inventory or housing supply is back above pre-pandemic levels. This could suggest future pricing weakness. In other words, if supply is outpacing demand, that would put downward pressure on home prices. Here's a really good uh, snapshot um, looking at uh, inventory levels over the past several years. And this is a little bit of a mess because it's a spreadsheet. So I'll share some other prettier um, charts here. But I want to share this because um, uh, I want to look at the averages on a national level because when looking at um, San Antonio, Texas, Austin, Texas, experiencing much different scenarios compared to the national average. So on a national level, um, active listings or housing supply is down by 38% compared to uh, March of 2019, uh, compared to March of this year. The four-year change is down by 26%, whereas one year, again, up by 24%, but compared to just two years ago, March 2022, up by about 96%. The one-month change up by 4.5%. I mentioned that because look at this. Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas, right now, they have 13.3% more homes for sale, this is for existing houses, um, from five years ago. Compared to the national average, it should be down by 37%. So a very big change compared to the national averages. On top of that, four years up by 40.5%, the national average down by 26%, whereas Austin is up by 40%. Um, <laughs> three years ago, or compared to three years ago, up by 391%. The national average 
only a gain of 57%. So inventory is piling up in Austin, Texas. So that'd be a closely watched metro that we should track in order to gauge what's gonna happen there because if inventory keeps piling up here, that would imply that we're gonna see a downward pressure on home prices there. And of course, it would imply that if supply is far outpacing demand, that would also imply a weakening housing market in Austin, Texas as well. Now, part of the reason why inventory is skyrocketing in Austin, Texas is because um, new listings are also rising as well. Uh, this area right here is the measure of new listings compared to the past several years. So new listings in Austin, Round Rock area, let's just call it the greater Austin area, is up by 8.16% from five years ago. The national average is down by 17%. Also, new listings increased by nearly 18% from three years ago and up by nearly 21% from two years ago and up by 19% on a year-over-year -year basis, much higher compared to the changes on a national level. So for example, the two-year change on a national level regarding the measure of newly listed houses uh, down by 9% from two years ago. Austin is up by 21%. Three years ago, up by 18% compared to the national average, down by 13%. So because we're seeing this um, increase of new listings, inventory overall, or the amount of houses for sale, is up big time, especially compared to the past several years. When looking at uh, San Antonio, Texas, let's take a look at that. And we can see this same phenomenon happening in San Antonio, Texas as well, which by the way, according to um, Redfin, as of Thursday, they looked at the 50 most populous metros and San Antonio was the only metro that was down on a year-over-year -year basis regarding the median sold price there. Um, could be do this right here because inventory absolutely skyrocketing there as well. Three-year change up by 223%, two years up by 257%. So one could argue, yeah, the inventory was so low back in um, three years ago, back in uh, 2021. So it makes sense that inventory has increased big time as well. However, the five-year change compared to March uh, 2019 up by 17.3%, whereas the national average um, compared to five years ago down by nearly 38%. So nationally down by 38%, whereas in San Antonio, Texas, it's up by 17%. Um, also from four years ago, up also as well by four, uh, 17% whereas the national average is down by 26%. So again, Austin, Texas and San Antonio overall are experiencing um, some uh, changes to say the least. Let's take a look at Tampa, Florida as well. So the greater Tampa area, I should say. Um, they're still down um, compared to five years ago, but only down by 10%, but triple digit gains over the past several years and also year over year up by 58%. 0.3%. Let's also take a look at the uh, greater Orlando, Florida market. It's also down by 10%, but huge gains um, over the past several years as well, getting very close to getting um, um, higher compared to uh, 2019's levels. In contrast, let's have a look at Hartford, Connecticut, the greater area. Um, they have approximately 80.5% fewer house for sale compared to five years ago, down by 75% uh, compared to four years ago, and a small increase on a year-over-year -year basis, up by 6% compared to the 24% increase on national level. This is why Hartford, Connecticut is experiencing big increases in home prices. And let's actually have a look at that. According to Redfin's data center, you, ba you basically can search any um, metro here. They have about 400 metros. So Hartford, Connecticut, Let's look at this. Median sold price, let's take a look at this, up by 15% on a year of year basis, whereas Austin, Texas, let's have a look at that. Austin, Texas is um, down, or actually, sorry, up by 1%, but much lower than the peak back in 2022. The median sold price in Austin, Texas at 454,000, uh, one year or two years ago, I should say, it was at 523,000. So even though prices are up by 1% from 12 months ago, they're still down by about 13% from two years ago. Additionally, looking at um, analytics from Resi Club, they, they pulled data from uh, realtor.com. In the Austin Round Rock area, 
for March, approximately 7,600 houses for sale. This is at least the highest March levels since at least 2017. In fact, this March, there's approximately 1,400 more homes for sale compared to March of 2017. In the greater San Antonio, Texas market as well, um, also at least a seven-year high for March as well. Uh, 9,567 homes for sale this March, uh, much higher compared to last year. Also, uh, I mean, way higher compared to the lows we saw in 2022 as well as 2021. But look at um, pre-pandemic levels. March of 2019, 8,153. Now there's nearly 9,600. In contrast, in Hartford, Connecticut, only 794 houses for sale. Uh, that is absolutely crazy. So uh, March of 2019, nearly 4,100 houses for sale. Now there's only 794. Uh, you know, go figure why um, uh, home prices are up greatly in Hartford, Connecticut. All right, let's change gears uh, slightly here. One more um, chart I want to share with you guys. They look at um, 800 um, plus uh, metros uh, nationwide. So they actually rank this by the size. So obviously in New York City, the biggest metro, uh, which encompasses um, parts of New Jersey and Pennsylvania. But um, from five years ago, there's uh, it's down by about uh, 40, uh, 51 percent. Four years ago, down by 45 percent. Um, Los Angeles is also down big time as well, even though they're up big time compared to two years ago. Chicago also down uh, big time as well. All these areas, by the way, experiencing big increases in prices. Dallas down by 15%. Um, Philadelphia, Washington, Miami all down by double digits. Um, let's take a look at the changes over the past five years. And what I'm uh, closely watching here is the areas that are more populous than not, right? So looking at the areas that experienced the biggest increases compared to five years ago, some of these markets are very um, small areas. So for example, this area, um, uh, Clewiston, Florida, it is um, ranked 771 out of 800 of the metros they track. So um, it is the one of the smallest metros they track. So I don't really put a whole lot of weight regarding the percent of changes for houses that are, sorry, for uh, areas that have a population of less than 50,000, for example. So I'm more focused on are those areas in which uh, they have a, a more populous area that are experiencing big gains or decreases of inventory. So looking at this chart right here, there's some areas um, that are fairly big cities or metros. So for example, some of the biggest areas are Waco, Texas, um, up by 25.4% from five years ago. Um, also, we have uh, Lakewind, Lakeland, Winter Haven, Florida, up by 23%. Then we have also um, San Antonio, Texas. There we go. Up by 17% from uh, pre-pandemic levels. And these uh, you know triple-digit gains we saw over the past uh, three years and two years. Also going down this list, uh, one of the other bigger areas in this list right here is, of course, Austin, Texas, up by 13.3% and triple digit gains over the past several years. In contrast, the areas that are down the most compared to March of 2019, look at this. Again, Hartford, Connecticut, down by 80.5%. Uh, Bridgeport, Bridgeport, Connecticut, sorry, down by 80%. Then we have other areas such as... Um, yeah, other areas of Connecticut. Then we have um, Peoria, Illinois, down by 77%. And we also have um, Hartford, Connecticut, also down by 75% as well, there as well. And also uh, Albany, New York, down by 73.3%. Also just taking a step back again, remember that chart showing the map as a whole, the Northeast experiencing the biggest decreases, whereas areas in um, Texas and Florida, some areas in Florida, are experiencing big gains uh, compared to uh, years past. So uh, as you can see by this list, the top 10, most of them are located in Connecticut. Uh, we also have Minnesota and Michigan, uh, for example, as well. Whereas in contrast, and we compare that to uh, the bigger increases, a lot of these areas are located in Texas as well as Florida. And with that said, uh, please check out resiclubanalytics.com. Really good, uh, useful tools um, and also uh, reports 
regarding our US housing market to say the least. Hope you guys got a lot of value out of today's video. If you did, please hit the like button. I really appreciate that. Of course, I appreciate you. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.